Okay, so what I've decided for the three quarter view or the half, the side view, um, I've decided I'm, I'm just gonna kind of breeze through these and I'm not gonna draw all of them. I may start them, I may draw some, I may not draw any. Um, the reason being is because normally this is what I send home for my students to finish on their own. So after we do the fundamentals of all the other sheets, all of our front views, because the picture I take of them is more front than it is side. Um, it is sort of a three quarter view, um, but it's not completely on the side and it's not even this far turned. So the rest of this packet, um, well at least the rest of the facial features in the three quarter view or side view, um, aren't necessarily going to help them tremendously. So going through all the first ones, all the front views, those are fine those are necessary we need to understand how the face works all that stuff so we don't end up with eyeballs on our foreheads and you know lips halfway up our head um, either so uh, this is extra but it's it is necessary but if i spent in my class if we went through every single sheet uh, it would feel like forever that we would we it would we'd never get to the the actual portrait because we have to be doing all the sheets and uh, normally it's about a sheet a day which is about 45 minutes um, of a class or about 40 minutes once we get going sometimes 30 so um, I want to make sure that you understand what you have to do if you are my student uh, for the three-quarter view so I'm gonna break it down so you understand what you're doing because there have been mistakes in the past when I send them home and then I get them back and I have to grade them and it looks like they had no clue what they were doing. So we can't say that anymore because this video is out there for my students to watch and they will understand exactly uh, what it is that I'm looking for. So um, for this sheet, for the head, this is very general and I'm just looking for a sketch. It doesn't have to be anything super detailed, but I need uh, the sketch of this. This is halfway, right? So halfway between. Uh, we got our eye line, which is halfway. Uh, if we want to do, oh, that was way off. Uh, if you want to draw the lines first and get that halfway line, get kind of that crosshair, right? Because this is our eye line. This is the middle of our head, right? And then um, the brow is, is only a quarter of the way up. So this, the eyebrow is a quarter of the way up. Because um, the halfway, remember the halfway mark, that would be your hairline. Uh, then we've got the lips are halfway down to the bottom, to the chin, right? So we gotta imagine our chin is way down here. This line here is what I'm putting way down here because that would be the half, which is your lips right there. So if you wanna kind of line this out and then start to mess with you know, the shape itself, how big that, because technically we should start with kind of a circle. And then that circle gets morphed into what we know as the head so this is going to end up being the back of the head if you notice that line there that's coming across pretty close to there um, and then this comes down for the back of the neck right and then uh, let's see where we at so this is the eye here we're going to put the eyes back a little bit because it's not it's not way out here that'd be weird the eyes would be way misplaced eyes would be about here and it's kind of this triangle shape that you see on the eyes. The nose comes down, so there's the brow line. So I'm gonna use this part of the circle. Brow, nose, right? And then that nose kind of comes down a little bit. And then that's gonna come down to the lips the lips are kind of another weird shape on the side. Always lips on the side are always really weird for me. They look so strange. It looks like a duck. It's strange, but anyways, um, get the chin. Oh, that's a big chin. Let's reduce that. 
This looks really kind of weird right now. There we go, get the nose in, get the eyebrow in, get that corner of the eye in, right? And then the hairline type thing. Then we got the side ear, which is going to go up to the out the brow, right above the eye. And some people don't even have ear lobes; their ear just goes right into their head. So again, this is just general. Chin's really messing me up. Not the greatest. I actually don't like that trying to draw that hairline in there. I'm not going to draw the hairline. Ear should come down a little bit further. This back of the head should be a little rounder. There we go. Not too bad. So I don't know why I did the whole thing, but anyways, that's what I want you to do. Just try to duplicate that. Pay attention to the height of things. Make sure that the eyes are in the middle. Um, and I think that's what part of my issue is. What I'm noticing is that I think my eye line is too high. Uh, my ear is too big. I'm gonna reduce the ear a little bit. just too big so it's okay you have to be able to self-evaluate um, self-critique as well make sure that you are paying attention because if I wasn't paying attention I need to refocus uh, figure it out see what I'm doing wrong okay so go through and do both of those so you're gonna do both of those and then this is the tricky one people keep messing up on the most is because they draw this here and then they draw that one here and that doesn't make a whole lot of sense this is supposed to be the starter for this okay so this is the geometric shape like we started with the other one you start with a circle right um, just so you get the idea of of the shape we can kind of see how the eye, eyelash is coming across or the eyelid is coming across and swooping down Right, and we got this lid, eyelid here, right, and we got the thickness. It shows the thickness here. This is where your eyelashes would be coming off. This is very geometric, but this is kind of a guide. It's going to be there to help you um, understand what you have to do. Okay, so that's just the rough estimate of where things should be. Then you start going into this and you start breaking it down a little more. So where's that tear duct at, right? So I'm gonna solidify that tear duct area. And then kinda, I don't wanna just darken the eyelid necessarily, but I wanna make sure that I know where it's at. This line up here, that upper line right there, that's this line. And that looks like it comes in a little more ends up over because that's all value over there because the eyelashes are coming from underneath um, they're actually coming from underneath yeah so this is this line so this is the line where your eyelashes are coming up and if you notice they're going in a different direction now because you're on the side and you see how high they're going up you know, that check mark type thing Right, and then we get the eye, eye or uh, pupil in here, and there's like a weird highlight going on in there. So you really got to pay attention to the highlight. I'm not going to do the highlight. I'm just going to kind of draw the pupil in. 
but if you wanted to, I've had students draw this like almost perfectly. Uh, they can look really great. I want you to spend some time on this because um, you're going to have kind of more of a. Ooh, that was long. Don't do that. Cluster a couple of these together because you can see a couple of these are really thick. Some of them are thin. The thick ones are usually multiples. And we just want to get those coming off there. I'm going to go back. I'm kind of, you notice I'm kind of skipping around. I'm just doing this real quick. Um, I just want you to see what, I, what my expectations are. So you start with this and draw this. Then I want you to try to reverse that put it down here, flip it over, flip that over, and try and draw both ways. Um, and give it a shot. Uh, for my students, this will be a grade, um, so they'll have to take their time on this. And believe it or not, teachers know if you spend time on it or not. Especially when we know what you're capable of doing in school. And then, so there's a ton of lashes in here. See how black that is? There's just so many lashes, but you can also see through. So there are some areas where you're gonna see through and there's some areas that it's gonna be really full. So when you're drawing at a distance, this is all just black almost. You're just kind of filling in. But when you're drawing up close, that's when um, you have to pay attention to where things are going how many, how thick, so on and so forth. Once you get the hang of it, it'll go a little smoother for you. Plus we have all this excess lines, like I can get rid of this now. I don't need that. Right? I don't need the lower one. I probably should have erased that before I started putting in the eyelashes, but oh well. So that's what I want you to do with this three-quarter view. Get some of that value in here in that tear duct area. There's a little highlight down here. And then, like I said, if you can work on the, like there's just a shadow here from the lashes too. So it's, there, there's a lot going on in this eye that you can really spend some time on. Okay, so that's the three quarter eye. Then we've got the side nose. This is pretty self-explanatory, but I'm going to go through this. I'm not going to draw on this one at all. Um, I just want to point this out. This is an A. That's an A. That's an A. That's an A. That's an A. So you are drawing this first here. Then you're going to this one. So this is like one, two, three, four. So step one, A, boom. Step two, A, you, you're drawing the line. Okay, step three, A, you're adding some value and get rid of some of the lines. And then step four, A, you're going really dark with your 6B probably. Um, and if you don't have a 6B, just do the best you can with making it look as dark as you can and keeping it light in other areas. Okay, so A, and then you've got B and C, so B, 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 so pretty self-explanatory. There's three different views. This one's slightly up, this one's more straight across, and then this one's slightly down. That way we kind of cover the gamut with the noses. All right, then we gotta go back through our sheets and we gotta look at where we had three-quarter view. So we didn't have one there. We didn't have one there. We didn't have one there. Okay, so our lips, we had a three-quarter view here. Again, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you're just gonna follow, we already did this one, so you're just gonna do the side view, same thing. Lines first, lines start going away. Value, dark, darker value, and you only gotta do one. No big deal, okay? And then we've got the side view ear. So we've got the side view ear. Remember, it's mostly lines, a little bit of value, and you're doing two of them. You're gonna try and do the left, and then try and do the right, and do one of each okay so that way it looks like we've got two ears and not ears going the same direction whatever um, so try and do two different views okay so we've got that and then we had we already did this so this you're going to have both of those done and we did the eye and then we just did the nose okay now um whew. Hair. 
tricky business hair. Um, I'm going to give you a couple examples of what I don't want to see uh, because it's very elementary and it's easy for kids to get caught up doing this because when they when kids think hair you think individual strands you don't think of chunks and I want you to start thinking of hair in chunks okay so hair um, the way a lot of people so let's just let's go kindergarten here uh, or just elementary in general I'm gonna draw a face and I'm gonna put hair all coming off the top so this is hair I've got to draw every single line my hair is really long so I got to draw every single line this looks very almost witchy okay and then you know normally the eyes are here and you know it's very scary like um, sometimes you get these kind of noses where you see both lines Whew. wow all right so no on any of that first of all your eyes are not in the middle of your head okay now your eyes and your eyebrows are up on your forehead we don't want that and we don't want what I call spaghetti hair no spaghetti hair this does not look like that okay and you are all capable of doing this all you have to do is think of your hair as chunks okay it's made of chunks don't try to draw every strand it's useless and it doesn't look right and your hair doesn't just come off the top of your head okay you have a hairline let's use it okay so for this one I don't want you to focus on like the shoulder like you don't need anything below the neck here you don't have to draw any of that forget about that um, I really don't even care if you have a jaw uh, what I would like is for you to get kind of the top of the head or the you know the round part right here if we get this that's a good spot to start because our hair if you notice that circle is still in here and then you're going to just kind of draw what you see right and then that's up top and we're gonna think about this in chunks Again, this is just a starter. I'm probably not going to finish this, but I want you to see roughly how big I want you to make this. And then I have to do a little shoulder work here just because of the. Uh, I got to come down further with this. Okay. And then what we can do is just erase the inside circle because that's just going to confuse us when we start adding value. So you erase the inside circle. We can keep the outside circle, that's fine. That looks a little full, looks a little big. I think I came too far out. Maybe that's a little better. But again, I'm not drawing a face yet either. And, and we've got different layers. Uh, hair is in layers. Um, we have a little bit of hair underneath here. And we got this layer happening there we got kind of a layer happening here so we've got value this can all be just kind of filled in so this is an okay place if you notice this is very soft uh, this is a good place to use your stub stay away from the highlights stub use a little bit of 2b 4b go a little darker you can see i probably need to have that jawline in right here which is fine i can put that in real quick there's my jawline because then i can get this shadow uh, in here which I can tell that my 2B is too light and I'm gonna need that 4 or the 6B and then fade that out from there so this is a spot you add in some of your darker areas and then you can blend out from there with your stub okay so think of this uh, as chunks you're not drawing individual hairlines in here this last picture this is where you will maybe draw some hairlines Okay, hopefully that's showing up good enough for you. Uh, this is where you would want a nice sharp 6B. So get your 6B sharp and, and you'll add in uh, a few lines and a few thicker lines and you'll, you'll work in some of the dark areas. Remember that contrast, look how dark that is compared to that. So this we were softly 
blending out and very easily. This is now we are going in. The last thing you do with, with any drawing is never a stub. You never end with a stub. So this is stub work. This is refining and getting that dark uh, contrast, okay? And then we end with the pencil. We don't end with the stub, okay? Don't ever end with a stub, all right? So go through that. If you're doing the female hair, uh, do that. Boy hair. Zoom out a little bit. You can see that's pretty tight. Um, so same thing here. Um, you don't have to, if you notice in this, there's not a front of the face. I don't really care about the front of the face. You will probably want to do this kind of round ovally shape just to get the hair where it belongs because this is your ovally shape and then you can just get in kind of the outline of where it belongs uh, around the ear and whatnot. This you can tell is very uh, soft. This is uh, probably a 2B, 4B with uh, then the stub and keep your highlights where they are because that's going to come into play later and just kind of get those get that stubbed out get that base coat you always think layers with hair even the girls hair uh, think layers and go soft to dark okay work your way darker uh, down in here is where you start working it with a sharp 6b so sharp 6b and if you're watching this at home and you don't have this sheet uh, pause it on the video so you can kind of you know pause it and then go back draw since you don't have my sheet uh, and then you know pl push play again and go forward but because I, I am kind of breezing through this three-quarter view stuff uh, and then these the ending parts so uh, this is where we use our sharp 6b and we're just paying attention to where because we need highlights there are areas that are of lightness so we, we can't just start filling in all dark that's not gonna make a whole lot of sense because then we won't ever get the layers so some of its dark some of its light some of its lighter uh, so you have to kind of play with that and pay attention to what's happening there okay and that way we get the folds and hairs over hair and so on and so forth we got a lot of moving parts in this um, but that base coat you've got to have a base coat down uh, for that underneath tone you don't want to leave it white and then just go black because then it's going to be harder to get the, the light value you have to work you'll be working backwards we don't want to work backwards and work forward so start in the back work your way forward okay so um, and again this isn't representative of everybody's hair um, this is just an idea of how you can get folds uh, things that are happening with your hair some of my students it, their hair just might be black with the way that the lighting is with the way their haircut is uh, it, it just may all just look black on top of their head um, with girls they, if they braid their hair it's so much easier for them to draw because there's more things happening um, there's highlights and dark areas highlights dark areas so on and so forth and uh, braids are kind of fun for them to draw um, anytime you can do that it, it works out really nice all right so with these um, this is a finish the face and there's a couple ways to tackle this um, but this is to help with proportions and help with shading and seeing wrinkles and things like that because when I take pictures of my students for their portrait that they draw I don't want them to do what I what I say I don't I don't want a mugshot I don't want them to sit there with no expression on their face it's boring and it's harder to draw so if they can at least smile and create some wrinkles that's going to be better for them because it gives you more reference points and more areas to add contrast. You'll get a sharper image that way. Um, so a couple of different ways. You can use a ruler on this since you're not doing this in class. Uh, at least most of the time you won't be doing this in class. Um, you, will, you can use a ruler and you can measure from this side to the ear and then go from this side and make a measurement and then make a mark and say okay that's where my ear edge of my ear needs to be you can go from here to there and measure that then go this way and say okay that's where my eye needs to be and then from here to the other end that's how wide it needs to be so on and so forth and you can kind of do a connect the dots um, you could just try to dive in and tackle this all just going across and try to guess and do the best you can um, and where it should be I mean you got to really look at the gaps here if you make a really tiny gap over here I bet you that this guy's gonna have a huge head over here and we don't want a huge head uh, we you need to try to do this as methodical as you can you can also draw a slight grid and split this use a ruler measure the distance here split it in half 
split it in half and then draw a straight line, just draw a straight line, draw a straight line, straw. that gives you somewhat of a grid to follow. Um, so you can do it that way. So you can use a ruler on this if you want to, to try and get things precise. Um, or you can freehand it and give it a shot and see what happens. I've had some good results with these. I've had some not so good results with these. Some people tried, some people didn't, you know, it's to each their own, but this is there to help as well. Okay, there's a lot of layers to drawing the face. Okay, so there's that. And then the last thing is optional for my students. I give them this as an option. Uh, they don't have to do this, but some kids want to. Uh, again, I, I brought this up before, I'm gonna bring it up again. Uh, drawing the human hand. Uh, they can do this, they can do multiple in here, or they can do one big one. Um, same with this, this is a side view of the hand. And then, um, and then we've got the foot, okay? And it's just a step-by-step, -step, and you can work on it that way, okay? Uh, the other option is something I used to do when I was younger, when I, because I always loved to draw, is I would just put my hand out like this. So I'd put my hand out and then I would draw it. And after I get done drawing it, usually I'd try and go silly with it and I'd make like a mouth open with a tongue sticking out or something. And it's just what I did, whatever reason I did that. But I would really try to get a rough sketch of everything and then I'd go back in and try to find those lines, those dark values of the wrinkles. And then, you know, try to, I would do that over and over and over and over again. I loved drawing my hand. It was complex, it's hard. And usually the things that are hardest to you should be what you focus on the most. If it's difficult, you don't abandon. It's not going to help you if you abandon something that's difficult. Look at it in a positive light or negative light, but the negative light's not gonna get you past it. It's not gonna help you grow. So something difficult, if it makes you upset and frustrated, take a deep breath, relax, maybe take a break from it for a minute, walk away and come back. Don't give up, okay? Uh, you can do it. You just have to think positively. Okay. You can do anything that I show you on these videos. Uh, you can do anything you put your mind to. Okay. So think positively. You can do it. All right. Go to work.